This is the Final Whistle Podcast with the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score from Western Supermare. Western Supermare nil Wrexham 2 and Wrexham progressed to the second round of the FA Cup and a satisfying performance. Maybe they ought to have been more ruthless going forwards in a game which could have been won by a wider margin but certainly Wrexham will take this as Western Supermare uh, a side who acquitted themselves exceptionally well. They're struggling down the bottom of the National League South but they stuck to their principles. They passed the ball around accurately and intelligently and moved the ball while trying to pass away through Wrexham. Ultimately, that was really what cost them, in all honesty. Wrexham's superior fitness allowed them to keep going further and further into the game. Wrexham pressed with good effect, and they forced mistakes from Western Supermare, who were, who were wedded to their passing game, but were forced into errors. But no no taking away the fact that Western Supermare really were uh, impressive in their intent and impressive in their desire to move the ball around and stick to their guns. And uh, all credit to them, they came out of there with a lot of credit. Having said that, <coughs> Wrexham really held Western Supermare at arm's length for much of the game. They've named an unchanged team from the one which beat Gateshead last Saturday. And despite a strong start, conceded a chance in the second minute. Welsh, who soon afterwards would go off, unfortunately, what looked like a serious injury, uh, pulling back a good cross on the left-hand side to pick out Swallow, who from 15 yards out should have done better, but ballooned his shot over the bar. After that, well, in all honesty, Western Supermare didn't really create too many chances, although having said that, Wrexham faded from the early intensity. First 15 minutes, excellent press by Wrexham, causing the Western Supermare problems. They only really created one chance during that period, though an excellent diagonal by Summerfield to pick out Roberts on the right. Roberts beat his man, running down the goal line, pulled a good cross into the goal mouth. Holroyd lunged at it, six yards out. Might have got a tiny touch onto his head, and Bevan then lunging beyond at the far post. Couldn't reach it, and it went behind for a goal kick. Next chance, Wrexham card, that was halfway through the half, and it was again caused by Western Supermare, making mistakes at the back the goalkeeper made a, a cute little reverse ball lifting the ball over Bevan's head when he was put under pressure but unfortunately for him McGrory the right back then tried to return the, the favour passing around at the back lost the ball Rutherford fed it in and Holroyd from 20 yards out drilled a shot which went narrowly wide of the right post McGrory would have a funny sort of game a good attacking fullback he got forwards well on occasion but defensively he would have problems which would cost Western Supermare by the end of the match then Summerfield whipping a, in a corner Walker climbing 10 yards out a good looping header but always just clearing the bar but at this point though things were starting to go against Wrexham the Western Supermare passing game was allowing to have good spells of possession in the Wrexham half when they didn't get it going properly, they were losing the ball too deep and they weren't able to get bodies high up the pitch. Once they managed to do that, though, they were able to pen Wrexham in and had good spells of pressure. Didn't create many chances, but they did pen Wrexham in. There was one opportunity for Western Supermare before the break. Hill uh, turning well and uh, being denied by a superb tackle by Jake Lawler in the penalty area. He did so well to just keep his balance. Uh, James Harrison in commentary described the turn as like a Hal robson Carnu turn against Belgium. I could see the, the comparison there. But Lawler, despite having been turned, managed to keep his balance, stretch backwards, sneak out a long leg, and dispossess him. Excellent work by him. Play then went down the other end because Western Supermare often were open to the breakaway when Wrexham were, were able to break down their attacks. Rutherford breaking down the right-hand side, frustratingly wasted a good crossing position. And then his frustration got the best. I mean, he lunged in rather wildly on the man who dispossessed him. If he'd made contact on him, the referee would have had a big decision to make, I think. Uh, but luckily he didn't, and the referee was happy just to carry on with play. In the last moments of the half, Wrexham really ought to have taken the lead. Young sweeping in a terrific cross from the left-hand side, a defender leaning, stretching towards his own goal. It could only get a foot to it and hope there was no one following up. Bevan was following up on the volley. From 10 yards out, he really should have scored, but sliced it, and it went wide of the left post. Like I said, Wrexham's press had uh, lost intensity as the half had worn on. After the break, the intensity was back in there and it maintained throughout the whole second half. Real credit to Wrexham for their level of fitness because they really did compete high up the pitch constantly throughout the game. And in the 52nd minute, that got the goal, which of course always makes these sorts of situations easier. It was a mistake from the unfortunate McGrory. Wrexham knocked it long. McGrory just misjudged the ball in the air, missed his header, and Bevan's the last person you want to have around in that sort of situation. Situation, always looking to pick up scraps. Needed well to get there. Played a lovely little ball down the left channel. Disguised pass to feed Summerfield in. Summerfield running in on goal. 
drilled it across the keeper into the bottom right corner and Wrexham had that precious lead and after that you just rather suspected that there were going to be problems for some, for Western Supermares who tried to claw themselves back into the game against the Wrexham side which had defended strongly when needed to a breakaway yielded another opportunity again Bevan causing problems down the left hand side squaring it in from 25 yards out Walker tried to drive in a shot bit too straight though keeper got his body behind it blocked it and picked it up at the second attempt but Western Supermares weren't out of it they tried to push up as well Hill the well striker up front for them doing well to turn and ripping a, a powerful shot from the left flank which to, went towards goal out of the sun Linton diving to his left did well to make a, a good parry pushed it away it fell on the edge of the area where Swallow drove in an early shot but he couldn't put it on target sent it just wide of the right post and there was also danger from Nurse, the left back, who had terrific quality on his left foot, he ripped in a couple of fine crosses into the danger area. One was really well dealt with by Lawler, diving towards his own goal, managed to get his head onto it and head the ball clear. Another one was, uh, created probably Western Supermare's best chance of the match, torn into the edge of the yard box. Byrne arrived and headed it over unmarked from six yards out. Later, Nurse would also hit a, a very ambitious dipping 30 yarder which Lainton just stood and allowed to go over his bar. He looked completely relaxed. The body language of somebody who thought the ball was not going in. I've got to say, from, from our angle, it looked darn close. But anyway, Nurse, for all this endeavour, wasn't able to set up a chance, uh, which was taken. And Western Supermare, as I said, their chances were increasingly coming from outside the area. The centre-back Pope joining in play drilled a 25-yarder, which went wide at the left post. But again, Lainton was in control. But on the breakaway, Wrexham were causing problems. Akeel Wright had been brought on, and it was a, it was a nice move, really. He was brought in almost to play off the striker, sort of 4-2-3-1. With, he was the, the, the furthest advanced midfielder forwards, and he was just helping with the press with a lot of tackles in the middle of the pitch and allowed Wrexham to win the ball high up and cause a lot of issues for uh, Western Supermare. Wrexham on the break looking dangerous, winning the ball high up the pitch and looking dangerous. Bevan sweeping in across to Holroyd, who from eight yards out took a touch tried to change the angle and when he hit it it was blocked probably should have hit it a bit earlier then a free kick on the left hand side Summerfield clever little routine pulled it back to Rutherford on the right edge of the box he skied it over when he probably shouldn't have done a bit better and then Pike lunging in to make an excellent tackle and then feeding the ball forwards to another substitute uh, Raquel Pike Pike 20 yards out driving it cleanly but just missing out just wide of the right top corner Wrexham though now we're making all the opportunities Rutherford's bursting down the right hand side beating Bauer cutting inside he had three on three in the middle probably should have crossed it instead he tried a left footed shot from a tight angle and put it over the bar but finally Wrexham took a chance it was a, a, a firstly a reward for Wrexham's pressing high at the pitch Re right winning a really good tackle then Rutherford lunging in and doing well to tackle Bauer and knock the ball further forwards the ball came to Bevan in the box he turned his man nicely one on one with the keeper drove a shot Purnell stood up well and passed it was strong wrists but it bounced down to Bevan and it was a superb finish by Bevan as it bounced up in front of him to keep on top of his volley and drill it with power beyond the, uh, the goalkeeper who was on the floor and into the net a great finish by Bevan his first goal for Wrexham in an away game the response from Western Supermare was, was game they made bold substitutions, ended up playing a sort of three at the back, but the two wide centre-backs were, were playing incredibly wide. In fact, Pope was going up regularly to join in play, almost like a wing-back. Uh, they were in real danger of being caught on the break, although they did have the odd little spasm of hope, Hill turning and driving a shot from the edge of the air, which was well blocked by Lawler. But at, late on, you felt it was likely Wrexham would get a third on the breakaway. Rutherford bursting forwards finding Pike who turned well and drove a shot but it was too straight and then in the first minute of added time but well, by this point Western Supermare were, were taking risks to the extent that they were remarkably leaving one on one at the back they start off just with a very high line trying to push their midfield as high the pitch as possible and then it just left Bauer marking Pike and that was it it was a remarkably bold or crazy decision and it could have cost Bauer in, the ad in that first minute of added time the ball played up to Pike right in front of the dugout on the halfway line on the touchline he turned Bauer and he had a clear run on goal there was no one else anywhere near Bauer reached out grabbed his shirt and pulled him to the floor the referee gave the yellow I think he had to give the yellow it was a long way out and on the flank but there's no way anyone would have got back to say, to get to Pike because Western Supermare were pushed so high up the pitch so it could easily have been a red. But anyway, Wrexham don't mind about that. 
and maybe if Weston Zubmeyer got a little bit of good fortune, good luck to them because they, they played their parts trying to pull off a shock here. It was an admirable effort by Weston Zubmeyer, but ultimately Wrexham didn't take advantage of the, the, the constant stream of promising positions they created, but it was a very strong and comfortable victory for them. For more analysis, have a listen to what James Harrison and I had to say after the game on Mixler. This is the Final Whistle podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. Ah, well, maybe we won't actually have the analysis because the Mixler app sometimes can be a bit erratic. I'm afraid it only recorded the first 15 minutes of the match. That's rather frustrating. But trust me, James spoke great words of wisdom. Uh, anyway, the key thing is Wrexham are through to the second round of the Cup. So let's see who we draw. I've been Mark Griffiths from the Wrexham media team. This is the Final Whistle podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team.